When you spend $200,000, $300,000 on a vehicle like this, you expect to get the best. And make no mistake, there's a lot of engineering that goes into this. But sometimes it's not good enough. And as usual in New Zealand, there's some shed, some backyard, with some engineer that thinks he can do it better. And you know what? They actually pulled it off. <laughs> These motor car companies are spending hundreds of millions engineering, tuning, and then you make it better. The motor companies design a car for reliability, essentially. Godson Motorsport specializes in power, performance, a quick race to get to 220 mile an hour, and that could be the life of that vehicle. The business originally started working on the Nissan GTR. We've now moved on to the Audi R8, Porsche, Lamborghini. We have a pipeline looking at the fastest cars on the market now and also what's coming out over the next five years and we're developing products to suit those vehicles. He's taking a pee before he's coming. Yeah. What have you had done to the motor on this one? Uh, this at the moment is standard. We build a big clutch for big power, but it must work on a standard car first. The first real production sports car that had a dual clutch in it was a GDR. And it came with a lot of problems. We sort of fixed a few problems. Then people got hold of them and said, uh, let's start breaking some records. And then we designed a clutch for 1,000 horsepower. We made 10 clutches, and we thought, how are we going to sell 10 of these clutches? Now, one in three GDRs in the world has our components in it. Now, he's gone out there and done a pretty decent time with his car. The Life Motorsport R35. You must obviously be quite a bit connected to the guys that make things go faster. What we have here in New Zealand is we have our R&D and product development and testing and our workshop and installation. The idea is that we bring all of our dealers around the world up to that level of expertise to really replicate quality installation of our products. This is what a clutch looks like the Porsche 911 PDK upgrade. Every little part of the internal components we try and upgrade, whether it's down to the surface material, the quality of the material, the quality of the solid components. All of our items will last a lot longer in a standard vehicle. The thing with our clients is they tend to push their vehicles to two and a half thousand horsepower and we have to then just go further with our development. What's extraordinary here? If you were just to pull apart that Audi R8, then this is what you'd see. 
you've got a pressed steel part. Anything that's driving has a hard insert, so it's all welded. And the difference in the two materials is quite substantial. Generally, the first step is converting a whole basket into a billet material or a forged material. The biggest difference you'll see straight away is that we've increased a lot of the wall thickness. There really isn't any more that you can get out dimensionally. This obviously adds weight, but it adds a lot more strength to the bruise. Yeah, the weight isn't so much of a deal when you've got that much behind it. Everything spins up pretty quick anyway. I'm always amazed to see how companies in New Zealand punch above their weight when uh, they go and manufacture or they in invent something or engineer something. What do you think? Why is that? Um, I don't know. Um, it's, not, it's not the air or the water. <laughs> we can pull a car apart, put it back together multiple times in a day to test something where most bigger companies uh, will take months to do that sort of thing. New Zealand companies are genuinely pretty innovative. A lot of it's got to do with focus and the time that we have to focus on what we're actually doing, not being driven by the market. Focus every day on developing and redeveloping and improving our product range. You still get to be a little boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Toys are just bigger. <laughs>